Hey there, Rebel Coder here. So this is my first video in a series of videos related to bioinformatics. We're gonna start learning how you can use Python programming language to do some really cool research and solve very interesting problems and very useful problems as well. So this short video is gonna be just an introduction of what you can expect from this series of lessons. So let's take a look at the slides. So a uh, target audience would be a beginner or mid-level programmers interested in switching to something more interesting than generic programming. Biology, chemistry people with no computer science degree and with some programming experience interested in learning how they can process genome uh, and genomic data using Python. We will not cover programming basics because this is primarily a bioinformatics uh, course. So you would, you would be expected to uh, know some programming basics. But we will look at some really cool code optimizations um, in Python to make your code smaller, faster, more optimized. Prerequisites would be basic knowledge of Python or any other programming language. But we will use some very specific Python uh, code in our course, uh, which is called Pythonic code. For the code editor, you can use anything you want. I use VS Code. You can use Atom. You can even use Jupyter Notebooks if you know what they are. If you don't, I will tell you a bit later in this video. What is my interest and experience in bioinformatics? I have been a professional programmer for eight plus years, and I worked on a lot of different projects, VR, embedded systems, graphics, rendering, and I'm interested in longevity research specifically cell signaling for tissue and organ regeneration, genomic sequencing, and NGS, next generation sequencing. We will be discussing all of these things as we go along in the course, of course. So video series structure is not really set, but this is kind of a small, a quick draft of what you can expect. We will start by learning about DNA and how we can represent it in the code. So that's going to be a very basic kind of Python lists, dictionaries. We're going to see how we can use that to store a DNA data. Then we're going to build a set of tools to work with the DNA, because if we want to do some protein um, sequencing and things like that, we need to have basic tools set. So let's say to find a reverse complement of DNA or Hamming distance or count nucleotides, right? So all of these things are gonna be explained and we're gonna go through step by step of building these kind of tools. And on top of those tools, we're gonna to start writing some more complicated code where we're gonna be accessing a genomic and protein database and looking for some really cool patterns in that data. We will also be solving Rosalind challenges and I will show you the website a bit later and we're going to earn achievement badges. It's like a game where you solve a problem and you get the achievement. This can also be used in your CV in a case if you're going to decide to move on and maybe do some data science or bioinformatics related jobs in the future. You can attach that as well as your GitHub repository. I will also be reviewing some related resources, books and courses in throughout our videos. So communication is going to be done through these two channels. A quick one, Telegram, you can join the channel, we can always discuss, you can always ask questions and things like that. For more in-depth discussions, we're going to use Matrix. It's an open source standard. It's like Slack, but it's completely open source. And we're going to be using only open source tools in our course. Matrix is so cool that you can actually paste in the code snippets and it formats them in the proper way. So it's much easier to discuss the code and kind of have this uh, cool community of people. And of course, for quick questions and comments, we're going to use a YouTube comment section. Suggested viewings and readings. If you're just starting uh, out with Python, there's nothing better than Corey Schaefer's channel. Corey's lessons are amazing, and he covers everything from start to finish. 
you can learn the whole Python language with a lot of cool things that are not covered by a lot of books and other courses on his channel. And I'm going to show you that a bit later as well. If you're already familiar with Python or any other programming language, I would strongly recommend looking up Ohm Genomics Maria's channel. She has the overview of bioinformatics field, what languages are good for what, what you can expect salary-wise, and just a very informative channel, and she helped me a lot when I was starting out uh, with bioinformatics myself. And of course, there's a lot of courses online, like Coursera's bioinformatics course, they have a free introduction course, but you don't necessarily have to take it, because we're going to be kind of combining courses on Coursera and a lot of different books in our lessons. And suggested viewings and readings uh, books. You can read any of these books, or there's a lot of uh, other books, but I re definitely recommend kind of having these maybe alongside any course. So the first one is a classic one. This is Algorithms on Strings, Trees, and Sequences, because bioinformatics mostly is writing algorithms to work on strings, trees, and sequences. Python algorithms, just to learn how you can structure and write algorithms in Python. And bioinformatics algorithms is an amazing book as well. But again, you don't actually have to read any of these books or do any other courses if you don't have time. We're going to be covering all of these books and some Coursera courses in our course as well. So here are a few things I reference in my slides. That's uh, Corey Schaefer's YouTube channel. So if you're just starting out with Python, he has a lot of cool videos. He has a whole playlist here from beginner to advanced user. He also covers a lot of advanced libraries of Python. If you don't know how to set up Python development environment, he covers you here as well. He shows you how you can set up Sublime Text, Visual Studio Code, or Atom, a few other development environments in this playlist here. So this channel is really, really useful if you're just starting out in Python as well. Ohm Genomics channel is very cool if you're not sure what bioinformatics is. And Maria has you covered here as well. She explains what bioinformatics actually is, what you can expect salary-wise, how to write scripts, what programming languages to use in which case. So this channel helped me a lot as well when I was just starting out with bioinformatics. The other way to learn Python from scratch is Codecademy's website. It's free. I actually use it when I was learning Python from scratch. You can use just a free course and it covers all of the basics. Or you can actually do this course and watch Corey Schaefer's cool videos as well because he has a lot of small bits and pieces that are not part of books and courses. And finally, I mentioned Rosalind Challenge website. So as we go along in our videos, we're going to be writing tools. And we're going to be applying them on this website as well. So you can grow your profile as a data scientist and bioinformatics programmer. Let's just take a look at one example here. These are all cool problems and you can actually see the ratio of how many people solved that correctly or not. So I guess you can judge how complicated this is. See, we can see the red one here. So multiple alignment. That's a quite a complex problem to solve. So let's take a look at the first one here quickly, the very easy one. You can always expand to get a better idea of what nucleotides are and what the structure is. And then you have the explanation of a problem and you have a data set and you have the sample output. So we're going to be writing these tools. I'm going to be applying them on this website as we go along and we're going to be earning these badges. So again, it's like a game and we're going to grow our accounts, which we will we'll be able to attach alongside GitHub repositories, hopefully. So just to finish this video off, if you're just starting out with Python, there's no cooler way than actually learn programming by solving really cool problems. I guess that's a problem with a lot of courses and books. They give you a lot of really boring and interesting problems to solve. And that kind of slows you down because you don't see the point of calculating the price of the houses and things like that. Or you are a biology person who really wants to kind of learn how to get their data from the lab, from the wet lab they call, into a computer and actually write some basic algorithms to work and kind of make sense of that data. I hope you enjoyed the series of lessons that are coming and let's keep in touch. That was Rebel Coder. Bye-bye.